Hey guys, it's Darwin. So lately in my Instagram and my q and I've been getting a lot of comments and questions about Cuban fiber gear. I recently bought a new Cuban fiber tent and I've been getting a ton of questions on how durable is Cuban fiber, is it worth the money, what Cuban fiber do you suggest getting? So today I figured I would make a video explaining the pros and the cons of Cuban fiber and is it worth it? Okay, so between my Instagram account, my YouTube account, all of my social media, a lot of people have been leaving comments on some of the photos of the new gear that I've been posting about my Cuban fiber gear. Asking, is it durable enough to last something like a through hike? Where do you get it? How expensive is it? How long does it last? So today I figured I would finally make a video answering some of those pressing questions about Cuban fiber gear. As most of you know, I'm planning my through hike of the PCT for 2018, and my main objective is to get the best gear that I possibly can at the lightest weight possible. Why? Number one, I kinda wanna do that hike a little bit faster, and obviously I wanna be more comfortable. So getting less weight on me is gonna make me more comfortable out on the trail. Another reason is I'm going to be carrying better camera equipment so I can shoot better trip videos for you guys so obviously I'm gonna be adding weight to my pack, so I want to make sure I get as light as possible. So before we talk about the pros, let's go ahead and get the cons out of the way. So the first con about Cuban fiber gear is, it's expensive. That is a lot of people's first thought when they start thinking about ultralight Cuban fiber gear, is yes, it is very expensive. There's no argument on it. There's no way to find it really cheaper unless you make it yourself. But why is it so expensive? So number one, most Cuban fiber is a very expensive material. So most of the things they make like a food bag or a stuff sack or something like a tent is made out of a certain grade of Cuban fiber. And that stuff runs about $35 a yard. So compared to things like ripstop nylon, Dyneema, it's a very, very expensive material. So obviously the price of it is going to cost more because the material costs more. The second reason Cuban fiber is so expensive is right now, currently no one is mass producing Cuban fiber gear. So companies like Osprey, Granite Gear, North Face are not utilizing this material yet, so it's not being mass produced out of a factory to where they can get production costs down. So most of the Cuban fiber gear companies are small cottage companies like Z-Pax, um, Hyperlite Mountain Gear. So these are small US-based companies with a very small production line. So that stuff is being made custom to order and being produced on a very small scale. So obviously production cost is going to be higher. So those are the main two reasons why Cuban fiber gear is so expensive. It's not a marketing thing. It's not trying to get people to get ultralight and charging them a ton of money. It's expensive stuff. It's expensive material. It's expensive to produce. So that's why the price is jacked up on Cuban fiber gear. The second con of Cuban fiber gear is it's not easily accessible. So you can't just get in your car, drive down to your local REI or local outfitter and look at and buy Cuban fiber gear. Again, why? The big companies aren't currently mass producing it. So if you're thinking about buying a Cuban fiber tent or a Cuban fiber pack, you can't go down to REI and test it out. So that is another con of it. You can't really play with it before you buy it. And I think that's why most hikers that do use Cuban fiber try to make as many videos as possible reviewing it, talking about the specs of it. So it helps you if you're thinking about buying that gear before you pull the trigger on it, make sure you do your research. Because again, you can't go down the street and just play with it. So aside from those two things, that's about the only two cons that I can think of. So let's get into the pros of Cuban fiber gear. Number one, and probably the most important reason why people pick it is it's lightweight. Cuban fiber is a phenomenal material originally designed for sailboat cells. It is also called Dyneema composite. So if you're searching around on some company's website and on one company's website, you might see it called Cuban fiber. Another website, you might see it called Dyneema composite. It's the same thing. Dyneema composite is the industry term for it where Cuban fiber is kind of the hiker term for it. So don't get confused by that. But again, 
Cuban fiber or Dyneema composite is an insanely lightweight and durable material. As far as I know, it's currently the lightest and most durable material that is on the market. And with it being so lightweight, what does that mean? You can carry less weight on your back whenever you're backpacking and focus more on bigger miles and being comfortable on the trail. So most of the reasons why hikers switch to an ultra light pack is because they want to be able to be more comfortable on the trail. And I know there'll be some people that are gonna argue that, but if you take something and strap it to your back that is 80 pounds right now and go walk up a hill and strap something to your back that is 15 pounds and go walk up a hill, can you really argue that you're more comfortable wearing the 80 pounds on your back? Come on, I don't think so. So because you can carry less weight in gear, that means you can carry more weight in the essential things like water, food, and maybe extra small gear items like if you're a photographer or a filmmaker, you can carry bigger, nicer camera equipment. So for instance, when I hike the PCT next year, I'll be having to carry gear that I'm not used to carrying. So for certain sections, I'll have to carry an ice axe, I'll have to carry crampons, and I'll also have to carry a bear canister. Not to mention all the extra water I'll have to carry for that first 700 miles of the PCT because it is all desert and obviously you need to camel up and carry more water. So by getting my pack weight down as low as I can get it before I get out there, that means that I can be comfortable when I'm adding all of this extra weight to my pack. Another big thing for me is when I go out and hike the PCT next year, I wanna shoot better video. I wanna shoot better photography. So I'm gonna be upgrading my camera setup which means I'm gonna be adding more weight to my pack. So any gear that I can get more lightweight, like a Cuban fiber backpack or tent, why not? So let's take two pieces of gear for example. In 2015 and 2016, when Snuggles and I hiked the AT, the pack that I carried was the Osprey Atmos 65 pack. And the tent that we carried was a two-person Big Agnes Copper Spur UL2. Both incredible pieces of gear, super durable, and at the time, pretty damn lightweight. So the total weight for that pack and that tent alone when you put them together was 114 ounces or 7.1 pounds. So 7.1 pounds for just those two pieces of gear. Doesn't sound bad, right? Now with the gear that I've chosen to take on my PCT through hike, like the Z-Pax Arc Blast backpack and the Z-Pax duplex tent, which is also a two-person tent, just like the Copper Spur. The weight of those two items together is 43.5 ounces or 2.7 pounds. 2.7 pounds for those two pieces of gear, which is a difference of 4.4 pounds compared to what I carried last year. 4.4 pounds is massive. So to me, it's totally worth it to switch to that gear. Why? Because again, that's 4.4 pounds that I can worry about carrying a bear canister, extra food, extra water, and better camera equipment. That brings us to our pro number two. And the question I get a lot, is it durable? The pro two is it's insanely durable stuff. So not only is Cuban fiber insanely lightweight, but it is also very tear resistant and crazy durable, depending on what grade of Cuban fiber you go with. So most companies will use a couple different grades of Cuban fiber to make their gear. So what do I mean by different grades of Cuban fiber? Well, there's different thicknesses of Cuban fiber and some are going to be durable than others. Most Cuban fiber gear like stuff sacks or like my food bag here are made out of a point 0.51 Cuban fiber or a 0.74 Cuban fiber. So that is what most of the gear is made out of. Even my tent is made out of, I think, the 0.51, which is super durable stuff. So for example, let's take my food bag. Now, my food bag is made by Z-Pax. It's made out of the 0.74 Cuban fiber, and this thing has been with me both in 2015 on the Appalachian Trail, 2016 on the trail. So that's 2,189 miles on this guy throwing it up in a tree every single night and putting my food in it every single day. It went out with me on the Arizona Trail. It goes out with me on weekend trips. It went out with me on the CDT section hike that I just got done with. And this thing is still holding up great. Now, I do have a couple small patches in this, but it's not because it wore out or tore or anything. That's actually from a squirrel 
crawling down my bear line and eating into my bag and stealing some of my food. So super, super durable stuff. Again, crazy tear resistant and really, really strong. Then you have the thicker grade Cuban fiber stuff, like the 2.92 thickness, which is what my pack is made out of and what most people make their Cuban fiber packs out of. So super, super strong, insanely tear resistant and really, really durable. The other great thing about this thicker grade stuff and most Cuban fiber is it's waterproof. So that brings us to our third pro, which is Cuban fibers waterproof. So most Cuban fiber doesn't have to be seam sealed. If you're using a pack, you don't have to use a pack cover or a pack liner. It's like pretty much having a giant dry bag with a roll top, so you just jam all your stuff in it. So again, it's less weight and less materials that you have to carry to keep your stuff waterproof. Even my Cuban fiber tent by z Packs that is made out of some of the lighter stuff is also waterproof. So I don't have to worry about seam sealing it like a sill nylon tent, and it's gonna keep me dry at night on the trail. This stuff sheds water like a champ. And I love not having to seam seal my stuff or use WDR coating or have to use a pack cover or anything. So it's less crap I have to worry about with my gear. So that brings us to our fourth and final pro of Cuban fiber and it is supporting small companies. So again, Cuban fiber right now currently is not being produced by bigger companies like Osprey, North Face, those bigger big name outdoor companies. So what does that mean? Small cottage companies that are based right here in the US are the only ones making it. So whenever you buy Cuban fiber or gear from these companies, you're supporting the same community that you're a part of. Most of all of these companies are started by hikers. So it's gear for hikers by hikers, which is pretty damn cool. Take Z-Packs for instance. Joe over at Z-Packs, the guy who started Z-Packs, is a triple crown hiker. And how did he start the company? He was making his own gear for his through hikes, took three long distance trails to really test that stuff and know how it works. And now he makes gear for us hikers. So he is sharing his experience from being out on the trail and making gear that hikers need and want to use. So because the people that are designing and making the gear are the same people that are using it on their through hikes and their trails, means that they're spending less time with marketing and putting bells and whistles that you don't really need and focusing on the things that a long distance hiker or an ultralight hiker actually needs. So they're simplifying gear and really giving you what you need and not giving you what you don't need, like a bunch of crazy things. Lately, there has been a lot of crazy things going on with gear. I seen a pack that had a solar panel built into it, which is kind of cool, I guess, but it's not something that you need. So it's really cool that these companies are hikers designing gear for hikers. So just keep in mind, whenever you buy that expensive Cuban fiber gear, you are putting money back into the community that you are a part of. And I think that's pretty damn cool. It's kind of like shopping local, but you're shopping local within your hiking community. And there's a ton of these small cottage companies that are making this stuff. Like my favorite, which is Z-Packs. You have Hyperlite Mountain Gear, Mountain Laurel Designs, Six Moons Designs, and a new company that just started, which is called Appalachian Ultralight. So tons of these awesome small cottage gear companies making really awesome gear for us. I'll leave a link to all of these companies' websites in the description box below. So if you're thinking about getting some awesome Cuban fiber gear, definitely check those companies out. I can't recommend them enough. All right, guys, so hopefully that broke down some of the pros and the cons of Cuban fiber gear. And then, you know, pretty much make your own decision. Is Cuban fiber gear worth it for you? Do you want to get ultra light? Can you afford it? Because obviously it is expensive. So if you're a hiker on a budget, maybe it's not for you. Everybody has their own gear that they like. From my experience of using Cuban fiber gear and now almost completely going to nothing but Cuban fiber gear, I can tell you I love it and I'll never go back to the heavier stuff because I love being lightweight. I love supporting local companies and I love something that I know is going to be tried and true in the field. So what do you guys think of Cuban fiber gear? What gear do you have or what gear would you recommend? leave some comments in the comment box below and let me know your thoughts. If you haven't got a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I'm posting a lot of new photos lately of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on throughout the week, plus some pictures of some past hikes and some of my new awesome Cuban fiber gear. So go check that out if you haven't already. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always guys, thanks for watching.